Uh, today we're going to talk about the chi-squared tests. Uh, basically, the chi-squared test, what we're doing is we're looking for uh, independence between certain variables. Uh, if, let's say, we're given uh, voting preferences uh, for male and female, uh, we want to see if the two numbers are different than what we would expect. Uh, if we're going to be looking at, let's assume that someone tells us that um, we're expecting a certain number of customers on N days, uh, and we want to see what the difference is between that, between what we observe and what we're told or what we would expect. Uh, we want to see, is that different? Is it statistically different? Is it like the person is lying to us? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use an example, and we're going to basically do students registering for class. I'm going to actually change the color there. We're going to just use a little brighter color for this. So we're going to do students registering for class. Students registering for classes. What we're going to do is we're going to assume that there are five classes, C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. And what we're going to do is we basically did an observation, and we're going to assume that they should be equivalent, that they, the registration should be even amongst all the classes. But when we looked and we actually counted, we had 35 students in this class, 31 students in this class, 38, 27, and 29. So it's really not, doesn't look even. But again, what we would expect in terms of a percentage, if they're all even, is it should be 20%. 20%, 20%, 20%, 20% and so forth. And if we took the total value of students here, the total number of students, we have 160. So therefore, the expected number of students in each class really is 32. So when we look at these numbers, they're really not that far off. And we would say, you know, uh, they, they could be close enough, but I'm really not sure if this is what we really would have expected uh, in terms of statistical um, equivalence between each of these classes. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to run a test. But before we do that, we need to set up what our hypothesis are. So we're going to start with what we call the null hypothesis, or H0. And that basically says that P1, which is the registration here for, or the observed number of uh, class 1, is equal to P2, is equal to P3, is equal to P4, is equal to P5. That all of them are equal. And conversely, we'll create an alternative hypothesis, which you may see as H1, where they're not the same. So P1 is not equal to P2, is not equal to, let me fix that, P3, is not equal to P4, is not equal to P5. So our null hypothesis is that they're all equal uh, in, in terms of what we should have gotten, and the alternative hypothesis is that they're not equal, so that they are very different from these expected values of 32. So what we'll do is we'll uh, basically calculate something. What we're going to do is take our observed minus our expected value. And what we're going to do is we're going to square that and divide it over the expected value. We're looking to see what's the real difference between the observed and the expected value. So here we end up with uh, 3, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 3 squared, because 35 minus 32, square it, over 32. And when we calculate this, you get 9 over 32, and this value is 0.281. When we do this again, we get 31 minus 2, which is 1 squared, over 32. And so here you end up with a number of 0.031. It's smaller as you would expect. When we do the others, we end up with 1.125, 0.7, whoops, 0 0.781, let me just fix that up a little bit, 0.781 and 0.281. These are the, the values that we get when we do observed minus expected squared over the expected value. So what we're going to do is we're going to sum these up, and I'll explain why in a second, but when we sum these up, we end up with a value of 2.5, and you can try that out. This statistic actually is known as our chi-squared critical, uh, sorry, chi-squared sample value. This is the chi-squared sample. We're going to compare this against a table that gives us our chi-squared critical values, such that our goal is basically to say this. If the chi-squared sample 
is less than the chi-squared critical, then you cannot, cannot reject the null hypothesis. And we're basically saying we can't say that this is not true, that there is the possibility, a statistical possibility, that H0 is true and that um, they are all equal. On the other hand, fix that sample. On the other hand, if the chi-squared sample is greater than chi-squared critical, then we can reject the null hypothesis. And as such, we could say that H0 cannot be true given the statistical parameters that we were given. So we now know the chi-squared sample that we've done is 2.5. So now we just got to figure out this chi-squared critical. So what we'll do is the chi-squared critical is basically going to have two values. First, we need the degrees of freedom. Now, the degrees of freedom we're going to classify as a k minus 1. Is that a lowercase k? k minus 1. What this basically means is this. It means if you take a look at the number of variables we have, we have five. That if you're given four of them, you can figure out what the fifth one is because you know the total number. That means one is basically really going to be known no matter what. Uh, if you're given any, if you change any of the four, you're going to figure out what the fifth one is. So k is five. It's the total number of variables that we've got. Five minus one is four. And that's why the degrees of freedom is four. It says we know, we'll know one of them, or we're going to hold one as being uh, always uh, what we can figure out or determine. The other thing that we're given is alpha, and alpha is the probability or confidence level that we're looking for. And if we're not told, then we're going to basically use 0.05, but in any problem that you get, you should basically know. Uh, it should tell you with the confidence level 0.05 or with probability level 0.05, however they, uh, they describe it. So now what we're going to do is we're basically going to look at the table. So here's an example of the chi-squared table that I got. I just pasted it here into uh, Microsoft Excel. On the left side, we have our degrees of freedom, and over across the top, we have the probability that we're looking for. So we know that before we had a, we were looking for degrees of freedom 4 with a probability of 0.05, so that gives us a critical value of 9.488. So this is the number that we're going to use to compare it to. So here, we're going to basically say that the chi-squared critical value is going to be equal to 9.488. And what I really should do is right after this I should put the parenthesis that says degrees of freedom 4 with 0.05 confidence level. And so it's 9.488. So we see that our sample was 2.5 and the critical value is 9.488. So we know that this means that 2.5 is less than 9.488 and thus, as our final answer, since the sample is less than the critical value, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. And I, I strongly encourage you to write it out that way and then add on to that, meaning that the, observed are, are, uh, the, the observed values are within statistical averages that they're close enough to the expected value that basically they are all statistically the same. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to just change the numbers a little bit and see what it looks like if we uh, have a, a broader spread amongst the observed values. Okay, so we basically have the same set of values here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to change the observed numbers. So our observed numbers for this example are going to be 40, 25, 19, 37, and 39. And we're again going to do the same value where we get the observed minus expected, square it, so in this case it's 8 squared is 64, divide it over 32 and we get 2. And when we do this for the rest of them, we end up with 1.531. This one will be 5.281. It's 0.781 and 1.531. So now our chi-squared sample, when we sum this up, we end up with a number of 11.125. 11.125 is our, our chi-squared sample. 
Our degrees of freedom remains the same at 4, and our alpha level is 0.05. That remains the same. So our critical value will also remain the same. So now we just examine this, and we end up with 11.125, which is our chi-squared sample, is greater than the 9.488 from the table, and thus we can reject the null hypothesis. And by rejecting the null hypothesis, we say that these are different, that they are uh, significantly different from each other from our expected value that they are equal.